You could write a book about the challenges that people have with technology, or two, or three. Uh, and I'm on my third. Um, around two years ago, I found myself consistently on some incredibly difficult projects as a consultant. For the last 10 years, for the most part, I've helped companies implement new technologies. And most of them did a very bad job at it. And the statistics would really bear that out. Something like 60% of all, te all technology projects either missed their budgets, went over their deadlines, didn't give people the desired functionality, or some combination of all three. 60%, right? And that's probably conservative. So I wound up writing this book. And if someone asked me, as people do, what's this book about in a word, I will say people. Okay, the technologies themselves are fairly mature, but they don't implement themselves, right? This isn't the Terminator movies, right? So someone makes the decision to do something or not do something, listen to someone or not listen to someone, and before you knew it, poof, okay? So that's basically the first book. And my goal tonight is to talk about um, more of the third book, but I want to leave plenty of time for questions. Um, if it's just me talking for 60 or 75 minutes, then I don't feel like I've done my job. Um, and feel free just to jump in. We have a small enough crowd. I spoke last Friday at the Chamber of Commerce, and I intentionally spoke for less time than I had to a lot more time for questions. So I just think that it's more important for me to address whatever you want after I talk a little bit about who I am and what I can talk about. There's certain subjects that are just way beyond my scope. Okay? So a little bit about who I am. So why should you listen to me? I'm a consultant, speaker, and writer. And my three books are... The Next Wave of Technologies, which is the second one that came out in, I want to say, March. Why New Systems Fail, this was the second edition that came out in, I want to say, February. And The New Small, which is, I think, my best book, and that'll be out next month. So what do these books have in common? Well, again, people and technology. Are these books totally related? No, nah, there's a lot of overlap, okay? Uh, you won't find any Agatha Christie or, or uh, Daniel Steele in any of them. Although for a technology writer, I've been told I have a lot of panache. Okay. So with the new small, it's about small businesses and emerging technologies. My favorite band is Rush. If you go to my website, you will find more Rush references. In fact, even in my books, I snuck in as many Rush references as my publisher would allow me. And from their last uh, song's release, there's this great quote. In a world where I feel so small, I can't stop thinking big. And it's just this very, very um, deep quote for me. And I started thinking about this in the context of technology. One of the things that's really fascinated me is the evolution of technology. Um, 15 years ago, when I first started using the internet, there was no Facebook, right? Uh, there was no Twitter, right? Uh, search engines, we talked about this at dinner, were terrible, right? Anyone use the web back in 95, 96, show of hands? Okay. It's a pretty different place right now, right? Okay? It can be really overwhelming when you think about it. Yet, the more that I thought about it when I would go to get, get my tennis racket restrung, I would talk to, in what a racket, right on Bloom, uh, Bloomfield Avenue, I would talk to Linda and Stan and say, what are you guys doing with social media? And they'll say, what? Right? And that's not to pick on them because most businesses really aren't using, say, social media, right? They might have a Facebook page, but what are they really populated with? Right? What do they really do? And I remember speaking at the Chamber of Commerce about six months ago to a technology committee. And it was like I was speaking Greek. I could not believe the basic questions that I was getting, which led to me to believe that there was this sort of fundamental lack of understanding about all the technologies out there and how small businesses in particular were really at an advantage. Who here has ever worked for a big company? Okay. Usually not the most nimble, right? Anyone ever work in the public sector or healthcare? Okay. They're not exactly beacons of change, right? So the basic premise of the new book, The New Small, is that it's better to be small. And in tonight's talk, I want to cover some of the material that I discussed in the book. But again, we've got plenty of time, and we don't have that many people, but quality trumps quantity. So jump in if you have any questions, OK? So I'll go through my dog and pony show, and then hopefully we can have a little Q&A, OK? Everyone can hear me OK? Okay. Traditionally, if you think about it, many small businesses have been really behind when it comes to adopting technologies. There's something called the technology adoption life cycle. Long story short, most organizations are laggards, right? How many people bought an iPad or an iPhone the minute it came out? Anyone? Okay. 
Most people wait. Most organizations wait. And bigger organizations wait for longer periods of time. Why, anyone? Why, why aren't all organizations on the cutting edge? I'm sorry? Wait to get the kinks out. OK. Anything else? Change. I'm sorry? Sometimes the price comes down. Yeah. Budget cycle, OK. So there are a lot of reasons that big companies maybe aren't at the sort of um, lead uh, when it comes to technology adoption. But there are different challenges for small companies because they can typically move a lot faster than their bigger brethren. Okay. One of them, long implementation times. I have worked on projects for a year or more, and I've only been there for part of it. Okay, for a small business, you really can't take a year to do something. Okay, that's a long time, right? IT project failure stories and statistics. Again, all in my first book. The Burt Hand teaches best. There are so many examples publicized about companies involved in lawsuits. Anyone ever heard of the IBM SAP implementation with Hershey's chocolate? Well, I'll put it to you guys. If you run a candy business, what are the two times of the year that you don't want to miss distributing candy? Anyone? Halloween. Halloween. No, no. No. Anything else? <laughs> Christmas. I heard Christmas. <laughs> okay. Now I'm sure Easter and Hall and um, St. Valentine's Day are up there, but uh, just uh, this happened seven or eight years ago. It was a multi-million-dollar lawsuit. Uh, Hershey's Chocolate could not meet all of its orders because it was in the middle of an SAP, which is a large software vendor uh, implementation. Okay, so their whole supply chain couldn't function. Now, while that may not happen to the same extent that a smaller company, again, these stories are out there in the media. So if you're in a small organization and you don't want to do something, case in point. Resourceability. Again, small companies, anyone ever work for a small company? OK. I'm a small company of one. If I don't do it, it, get, it doesn't get done. OK, now that's an extreme. But if you have 10 people in a company, they're all probably pretty busy. Again, having worked in larger organizations, I think we've all seen people sort of sitting around. Anyone ever see that Seinfeld when George digs the desk, uh, makes a bed underneath his desk? Okay, I've literally worked with people who have had basically nothing to do. Okay, I have not seen that very much at all in my career working with smaller companies. They just have too much to do. Okay, so even if you can convince a small business that they need to have a, a system, right? And by system, what are we talking about here? Some of the most important systems for organizations are, say, CRM or customer relationship management, right? If you go into many big companies and you say, can you produce a list of your customers? I'm not kidding. Many of them will say no. They don't know how many employees work there, how many customers do business, much less if you want to get into more sophisticated analytics, right? Where are most of our sales coming from? Which products? Okay, which employees are responsible for the most sales? To me, these are basic questions. And I can tell you from a lot of arguments with people that those are questions not typically easily answered. Okay? Now, it's more prevalent at bigger companies, but it's still an issue sometimes at smaller companies. Perceived need. Sometimes people think, you know what? Microsoft Excel is good enough. And look, I love Excel. Okay? I've read the Excel Bible, I think, in terms of Excel. But it has limitations. Okay? Or maybe you use an Access database, all right, or Microsoft Word or something like that. Those are fine applications, but they have a certain purpose. Okay? Sometimes people don't want to change. Again, people issues. Priorities. This along, goes along with perceived need. Sometimes people say, you know what? Right, we really could use, say, Salesforce.com, which is a CRM system to manage customers. Or we could really use uh, Workday, which is a, um, a particular application for handling HR and payroll. But you know what? We've got 10 other things to do, OK? Bad decisions. Um, as I said before, sometimes the burnt hand teaches best. Many organizations, even smaller ones, have struggled implementing new technologies. And as a result, right, they've been down that road before, and they're a little timid to do that again, OK? This is very interesting. Going back to what I was saying before about the explosion of different technologies and content, there are so many different options right now. When you think about it, you say, well, how should I build my platform, right? For, for blogging, just as an example, my website runs on a platform called WordPress. Has anyone ever heard of that? Yes. Okay, something like 20 million blogs, last time I checked, ran WordPress. It's very popular. 
okay? But that's not the only one. You've got ones like uh, Joomla or Squarespace or a myriad other ones, okay? Sometimes, in a way, if you think about it, it's almost like the Cold War, right? The Russians were the bad guys, right? And now when the Soviet Empire fell, I often make this analogy, well, who, who are the bad guys, right? Well, it kind of depends on the day of the week. So it's a much more complicated world. The answer isn't always obvious. In terms of software, go back to the mid-1990s, right? That was sort of the high point of Microsoft's hegemony. Okay, everyone ran Microsoft Office. Everyone used Windows. That's not the case today. Okay, so we have all sorts of different choices. And to some people, that can be overwhelming. Okay, a lot of people, we just came up at dinner. Some people say, I don't know how to get started in, say, social media. Okay, and it can be overwhelming, right? We're tweeting and friending on Facebook and LinkedIn and all these different sites. Sometimes people don't know what to choose. Okay, the final thing, and this is very important, is finding the right scale. If you look at the vast majority of what I call enterprise 1.0 applications, and by that I mean in the 1990s, they tended to be what they would call client server applications. In other words, you had to have the physical application installed on typically your desktop or laptop, okay? And that's how you used it. If you didn't have your laptop, you couldn't check your email, okay? Now, if you go into enterprise 2.0, which is really, in a nutshell, the subject of my second book, The Next Wave of Technologies, Organizations are moving beyond that. You don't need to know exactly the right scale. You don't need to have your laptop with you to access your email. Who here doesn't have a cellular phone? Okay, it's a very different world right now. So with regard to scale, there's been really sort of two competing forces here. Uh, software as a service and cloud computing. I'll just define those very quickly because may maybe people don't know what they are. With cloud computing, in a nutshell, I can give you a very technical definition, but cloud computing means that your data and your applications are essentially available anywhere, okay? You don't have to have your laptop or desktop. You can access basic information on your mobile phone. No, you're not gonna write a book on your iPhone, although actually somebody has, but that's sort of exceptional. Software as a service is also very similar. You essentially rent the software, okay? You don't buy it per se. You pay by the license or you pay by the transaction. So at the end of the year, if you had a great year, maybe you paid more, but you don't have to find the right skill. You're not confronted with a $50,000 purchase decision when you don't even know if you're going to use it, okay? It's a way of sort of um, dating before you get married, if you like, okay? That's no longer a problem now, okay?